Play that like a master craftsman. <laughs> well, I'm gonna put a few ukuleles into the lab. He's got, it's in his work clothes here. <laughs> what do you read about that? I think it's one of the sweetest sounding <laughs> little mandolins that I've uh, played for a long time. It's incredibly, uh, really consistent. Punchy, isn't it? Punchy. All over the place. And I mean, for, for that, for, I mean, for, um, I guess for the sort of traditional style, or for any kind of style, these things you've really got to kind of utilize. You, you need a mandolin that's going to give you the dynamics. Yeah, Otherwise yeah, it just, yeah. It, it, it yeah. sounds clunky. Whereas this thing, it's. I find that the, this has got so much more low end. Very much thump, thump but, but not too much thump. No, no. But, I mean, you can still get the, you still got that that kind of nice beat beat sound. Because I mean, I've got one. I've actually got a Gilchrist. Yeah. And it's 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 a lot of people are surprised at the amount of thump that it's got in it. Yeah, yeah. Well, like F4s actual, are F4s known for that. No, they're normally like, like very toppy. Whereas yeah. this thing is uh, is actually quite surprising. <laughs> yeah. Even the size of it. <laughs> You can almost put it in a couple of slices of bread and make it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Is it is a gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous piece. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that, that's the best one I've ever handled. I've played some old Gibson F4s and they're good. Yeah. Some of the old ones have the alloy bridge. Have you ever seen them? No. They have an aluminium bridge, which is really fun. Not the whole bridge, but just this, this section here. You know, like yeah. that's an adjustable bridge, right? Yeah, but the yeah. F4s normally don't have... Some of them don't have adjustable bridges, so uh, yes. the crest at the top yeah. was aluminium in some oh, of them. Oh, really? And look, they sound good. I mean, the yeah. ones I've played are good, but this thing's quite... I don't think this is a standard copy of an F4 because... No, the, no, you've got the... the, the, the uh, yeah, the fingerboard yeah, is... Yeah, there's a bit of a res. It's a bit more res at the top. Well, it's a floating fingerboard, like an F5. Yeah. So the fingerboard isn't coming into the top mm. like a, a Gibson would, I yeah, think. Yeah, well, so. you've got these two little wings, that, which is a kind of, that's more like a teardrop, the way that you drop a neck into a teardrop, you yep, see the... Yeah, but, um, so, yeah. See, the fingerboard doesn't restrict the top, which I think gets a, gets more volume out of it as well, I reckon. Mm, yeah, so you don't have the fingerboard sitting on there. It's certainly got, uh, got a heap of volume. But there's one tune that actually tests these things, which I use, is a, it's called the Japanese Hornpipe. It was written by a, oh, a, an Irish fella. Can we hear it? <laughs> But it, it kind of, it, yeah, it was written by, I think it might have been a fellow from Donegal, the Japanese hornpipe, not quite sure where the name came from, but uh, it's a good name. It's a, great, it's, a, it's a great name and a cracking tune. Anyway, here we go. Don't try that at home, kids. <laughs> Tony O'Neill, you rock, even oh. on your lunch break. Cool, thank you, mate. <laughs> thank you.